Hi, welcome to OEC and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create custom login and registration in ASP.NET Core MVC. I will use .NET Core 8 which is the latest LTS version of .NET Framework. Actually, I had created a video on the same topic long time ago using ASP.NET MVC 5 and in this ASP.NET Core MVC things have changed. There are some changes in the framework compared to the previous .NET 4.x framework on which MVC 5 is based on. That's why I am creating this video. As this video is primarily for the beginners, so I am using very minimalistic way, but this time I have made some changes like view models and entity classes. You can check the previous video to understand the difference between these approaches. Newer one is a little bit professional way to design the classes in ASP.NET MVC. I have put the link of the previous video in the description. I will use Entity Framework Core for database access and I will use SQL Server database. Actually, I will use local DB, which is the trimmed version of SQL Server for development purpose. So it will work fine on SQL Server. This time I will use view models, even though this video is for beginners, but still I will use view model because it is used in enterprise application. Now all things are not as per enterprise level in this tutorial but it's good to know about view models. First, I will go ahead and create a new project. I will use ASP.NET Core web app, which is based on model view controller pattern. Here it is appearing in my recent templates, but you can also search it here in web project type templates. Next, give it some name. I have used custom auth, click next. And here it is using .NET 8.0 long term support version, which is the latest .NET version right now. And I'm gonna use it. That's why I will not change anything here. Click create. In this new project, first I will add some required NuGet packages. And in our case, we need Entity Framework Core. So right click on project and select manage NuGet packages. Now in the browse tab, I will search for entity. And from the result, Actually, we're not going to install this first Entity Framework Core package. Instead, we're going to use this Entity Framework Core SQL Server package because we are going to use SQL Server database in our project. So let's install it. Apply. I accept. And it's installed. We also need this Entity Framework Core Tools package because this is required to run database migration from Visual Studio. So let's install it. Apply, I accept, and it is installed. We are done with package installing, so close this view. Now we will start coding. As we are using code first approach, first let's create a class for our database. I will add those classes in a separate folder named entities, as they are entities type classes. Now, there are two approaches to do this project structuring. You can put these entity classes in models folder and then create a view model folder to keep your view models there. Or put entities in the entities folder and put your view models in models folder. I'm using this second approach just to show that models folders can store classes other than database classes. There is no restriction. It's only by convention that we store controller classes in controller folder and views files in views folder. But there is no restriction with the models folder. In enterprise level application, these two types of classes are kept in their separate class library projects. But in this application, we will not go with that as it will make this video much longer. Let's create a new folder named Entities. And in this folder, add a new class. Name it User Account. This will become our database table because later we will add this class as a property in our DB context class. You will see it shortly. We will add some properties in this class and those properties will become the columns of that table. First property will be ID, which will become primary key of the user account table. So PROP, double tab, and this is a shortcut key to create a property in Visual Studio. Int, tab, ID, enter. Let's add an attribute called key which is from system component models data annotations namespace. And this attribute will make this property as a primary key of the table. 
using this attribute is not required because by convention entity framework will turn a property named id into primary key automatically but here i am adding it just to show that you can manually mark a column as a primary key in this way let's add other columns also so similarly i will add first name last name email and username password now let's add validation with help of data annotations attributes like required attribute this will force the user to fill that field this will make this column as a not null required column and if user doesn't fill its value then it will show the error message first name is required although in our case it will not show this message on ui because we will not use this class directly on view instead on view we will use view model but i am adding it here in case you plan to not use this view model and use the entity class directly on view in our case it's simply used for make the database column as not null let's add this attribute on the last name also on email you can use some other attributes also like data type attribute and the type will be email username is also required and password is also required and the type will be of password as i will use view models so i will be removing the data type attribute shortly because this attribute deals with the data type validation on ui and this is an entity class but i am showing it here just because if you want to use this entity class directly on the view as most smaller application have the same approach so for database we have right now only this required attribute applied which make these columns not null but with newer dotnet versions like dotnet 8 if you don't apply this attribute then also entity framework will make these columns as not null because the data type for these properties are not null if you want to make it accepting null values then you need to make the data type as nullable so here adding required attribute is not necessary but i am showing it as this video is primarily for beginners now let's add some other attributes for example max length so here we are saying that this column will have size of 50 characters and during migration it will set the size of the column to 50 characters let's add this on the last name email which will be 100 character max username with 20 characters and on password with 20 characters now as we are not going to use this entity class directly on view there is no need to use this ui related data annotation attributes so let's remove them so let's remove the data type from password and from email in our database we want the email and username fields to contain only unique values that's the practical thing to do we don't want two users registering with the same email a username these values should be unique per user for that we will apply unique key constraint on these columns so that if any user will try to register using the already registered email or username then database will throw an error and we will cache that exception and can show appropriate error text to the user the unique key is added as a attribute on the table class if you are using the data annotation way let's add the unique key on the email column here i have used the index attribute index attribute name of email and is unique equals to true same way we can add the unique key for the username column now let's add the db context class this class will be used to access our database and query it in this class we will add all our table classes which is also called d2o classes means data to object classes we will add it in the same entities folder right click add new class you can name it anything i will give it name app db context add first we need to inherit this class from entity frameworks db context class now let's add a constructor and the parameter for this constructor will be db context options add db context 
let's name it options then let's pass this options value to the parent class constructor like this so this base options does that now we will add user account class as a db set type property here so that it can be migrated as a table and also it will be used to access the data from the database db set user account user accounts table will be named as user accounts one more thing we are defining the table columns metadata like column length uniqueness all these using data annotation but these things can also be set up in the db context class for that we need to override the on model creating method and here it generated the whole method and inside this method you can use fluent api to set tables and column properties like length or even table relationship but i am not going to use this in this video so this is our db context class now we need to add this as a service in asp.net service collection and from there we will provide the connection string of the database so open program.cs file and here after builder is created we will write builder dot services dot add db context and we will use app db context which is our db context class then options options dot use sql server here we need to pass the connection string which we will get from the configuration value builder dot configuration dot get connection string and then we will pass default and semicolon so what we are saying here is to go to the configuration values and get a connection string name default but we haven't provided our database connection string anywhere so let's do that for that we will open app settings.json file by default configuration values are stored in the app settings.json file in asp.net here let's add a new json key connection strings and this should be exactly named like this connection strings and in value its object type let's add new key named default and the value will be this so this is the connection string here we have the server name local db ms sql local db if you are using sql server then you just need to give that sql server name here i have given database name as custom auth trusted connection true and multiple active result sets is equal to true when we will run the migration then it will create a new database named custom auth before running the migration let me show you the current database in my system i will show it directly in visual studio but you can also see it in sql server management studio in visual studio go to view sql server object explorer here under the sql server you can see database server name which i'm using in connection string if i expand this under the database node all my local databases are appearing you can see custom auth database is not here because we haven't yet the database migration so let's do that for that open package manager console you can open it in visual studio from tools nuget package manager package manager console here let's add our first migration add dash migration then migration name initial you can name it anything here i have given it name initial hit enter and here a new migration is created here you can see create user account table command and all the columns with id and all columns data type and their size as we mentioned in the user account class here is the primary key and here are the unique keys in the database list still this database is not appearing even if i try to refresh it 
still it's not appearing because after migration we also need to update the database so let's run that command update dash database enter And here it is running all the SQL statement that is generated from that migration. Let's refresh the database list again. And here you can see custom auth database. You can see the tables. Here we have two tables, EF migration history, which is automatically created by entity framework migration to track the applied migration list. And then our user account class. You can see the columns and here you can see all the columns as we mentioned in the user account class. Okay, let me close this pane. Now we will create view models which will be used to display data on UI and will be responsible to collect data from UI. Let's create registration view model, add new class in models folder. Give it name registration view model. In this class, we will have same properties as our user account class. So I'll copy and paste them here. Let's add one more property for confirm password. Data of this property will be compared with the password field. And data type of this field will be password. Let's add the same on password property. For the email field, we can add email address field, which will validate if the text entered is a proper email or not. But this will also verify an email in this format as a valid email, which is actually true. But in case you strictly want this email format, then you will need to use a regular expression. So regular expression. And here is the regular expression. I'll put it in the video description. And then let's copy this error message and paste it here. Okay, save it. One more thing, this max length attribute is used to check if entered text is not more than the specified limit. In this case, 20 characters. But in case you also want to enforce minimum character required, then you can use string length attribute and then we can give it minimum length value, say five characters. Let's update it to max 20 or min five characters allowed. Same you can apply on other properties, but I'm not going to use that. Save it. Let's create login view model. And in this class, we only need username and password fields as only these two will be used for login. So copy these two from registration view model and paste it here. Save it. Now we will create controller for login and registration functionality. Right click on controllers folder, add controller, select MVC controller empty add let's give it name account controller add here in this controller class add a new action method for registration public i action result registration and in the body return view this is the get request method this method will show a blank registration page and after filling that form, user will click on submit button and that will post that form to server. 
So we will need another method to perform this task. Let's add another method. Just copy paste it. But this time with HTTP POST attribute. Add parameter. Registration view model. Model. Now first we will check the validation with the help of model state. So check if model state is valid. Also pass this model to the view. Back to here, if model state is valid, then create a new user account. User account account equals to new user account. So here we are creating the instance of our entity class. Let's assign the values to the properties of this class from the view model class. So here I have assigned the incoming view model values to the entity class like account.email equals to model.email and same way for the other properties. To be honest, here it seems unnecessary to use view model because we have the same fields as in our database class. But this way is very useful when you have more columns in the database but you want to show only selected fields on the UI or on UI you have more fields than the entity class like here we have confirm password field. Now we need to save this entity class values in the database. For that, actually first we need to access our database in the controller class. Database is accessed via DB context class in entity framework and we will get the database context from the ESP.NET services where we had registered our database context previously. So to get the database context from the service, we will first define the reference by private read only FDB context and name will be underscore context and then we will use constructor dependency injection to get the db context object so create the constructor of this controller class in the constructor parameter app db context app db context and underscore context equals to parameter app db context. Now we can use this to save our data. So back here underscore context dot user account dot add and pass the account object. Then save the data in the database by underscore context dot save changes. If we don't do save changes, our data will not be inserted in the database. So always perform database context save changes to save your data in the database. After registration data is saved, the user will get the blank registration page with success message appearing at the top. Let's create the contents of the input fields on UI by model state dot clear. And also show a success message by adding view bag dot message equals to we will use a string interpolation using dollar double quotes and inside curly braces account dot first name and account dot last name registered successfully please log in then return view this return view with the model is for the case when there is a validation error caught and the input fields on the UI will not get clear so that user have not to fill all those input fields again. One thing to note here is that we will save the password in the plain text format. Also as we have implemented the unique key to the email and username fields, if any user is trying to register again with the same email or username then database will throw error. So we need to cast that exception and show a user friendly message on the screen. So let's move this inside the try block. I just selected this and used control plus S key combination. Then write try and select it. And here in the catch block, change it to db update exception and then add model state dot add model error key will be blank in message. Please enter unique email or password. Return view. 
with model to keep the input fields populated. So this is the registration functionality. Let's move to login. Create an action method for login, public, I action result, login, and in the body return view. This will show a blank login screen. Then user will fill the username and password and click on login button, which will post that data to our backend. So we need that post method also. So let's copy this and paste it. Add HTTP post attribute and pass login view model model. Same as earlier, validate the input by model state dot is valid. Pass the model here also in case it's not valid. If valid, then we will check if we have any user in the database matching the user entered username and password. So where user equals to underscore context dot user accounts dot where x says that x dot username double equals model dot username and x dot password double equals model dot password dot first or default. So this will check only the username and password. We also have the email field in our database. So we can make it to do login based on if email or username and the password match with our database record means user will either write username or email in the same input field and the password in the password field to do login. So for that, let's change the login view model. Change it to username or email. Also change the required error message. This property will show the label on the UI as it is written here. Username or email without space. To display it with the space, we can add one more data annotation attribute, display name. Here just write username or email. Save it. Back in our account controller, let's change this logic to check username or email. So I will put this in brackets, change this to username or email, then or x dot email equals to model dot username or email close bracket so this will check if the username or email input data equals to database email or the database stored username if any one of this match and the password match then it's correct user now if user not equals to null then success else so error message model state dot add model error empty key and username slash email a password is not correct If it's success, then we'll create a cookie. After user is successfully logged in, we need to redirect it to any secure page or home page that only logged in users can access. So let's add a new action method public i action result secure page and in the body return view. Here we will also display the logged in user's name, but before that, let's configure our cookie authentication. For that, open program.cs file and after add controllers with view, add builder.services.add authentication, then cookie authentication defaults. To resolve these red lines, just put your cursor in between this text and press Ctrl plus dot. Select 
using microsoft.esp.net core.authentication.cookies and dot authentication scheme then dot add cookie and here after use routing add app dot use authentication that's it now come back to the account controller and here we will add a new attribute authorize this attribute makes this action method protected and only authenticated users can access this page inside this method we will extract the user's name from user identity from cookie claims but before that we need to generate the cookie after successful login so here i will write where claims equals new list of claim and then i will use these claim values now you can give any type of claim or use some predefined claims so here in the first line i am using the predefined claim type claim type dot name and the value is user dot email in the second line i have defined the same claim but this time i have given the claim type as a string name and provided the user dot first name as value normally if you have two keys defined like this second one will overwrite the first but in this case actually the first one is different if you hover your mouse cursor on it you can see its value it's from identity claims name so this key is different from the second claims key we will use this identity claims name value to show user's name on the secure page you don't need to write the second one i am showing just for an example here and the third line is role which is user again you can give any type of claim with any value it's up to you how you design your user claims after that let's create claims identity where claims identity new claims identity and pass the claims as parameter then authentication type as cookie authentication defaults dot authentication scheme then http context dot sign in async cookie authentication defaults dot authentication scheme and second parameter is new claims principal and pass the claims identity so here it will log in the user and create a cookie after that we can redirect the user to the secure page so return redirect to action and copy and paste this secure page method so this should match exactly with the action method name so as soon as user will do login on success user will be redirected to home page in our case we have named it secure page now back here in the secure page as cookie will be already created and user is signed in we can extract the name of the user from the identity claims and we'll put it in the view back so that we can access it on view and show it on the user's screen so view back dot name equals to http context dot user dot identity dot name so our controller code is near about complete let me try to zoom out uh, it's too small yeah that's fine okay so here we have an index method also you can leave it actually i was also not going to use it but now i will use it to show the list of the users registered in the system okay so underscore context dot user accounts dot to list and yes i forgot to add the logout method so come here let's add a new action method public i action result logout and here first we will log out the user so http context dot sign out async 
and pass cookie authentication defaults dot authentication scheme you can also await it but i will go ahead and redirect to index method where we are already showing the list of registered users so now our controller logic is completed now we need to add the views for our action methods i will start with this secure page so right click inside this method body add view select razor view empty and name it secure page this must be same as your method name here delete these and inside h4 tag we will write hello then value of view bag dot name close this logout method doesn't need the view as we are redirecting to the index page let's create the login view this time we will use razor view the second option which gives us options to use asp.net scaffolding to generate our views here in template we will select create in the model drop down we will select login view model because we are using view model on the view we are not using any entity class directly so i will not select db context class click add visual studio will use scaffolding to generate the view with all required html this is a really time saver thing and here is the generated view let's remove this heading let me zoom it a little bit here is the input field along with the validation control for username or email and password field here is the button that will submit the form it's labeled as create so let's change it to login and change this to this a link to the registration page if user has not already registered in the system we only need to mention action method here as this login view is also the part of the same controller as the registration method is so no need to mention the controller name save it and yeah this view is done come back to account controller let's add registration view razor view for the template select create so actually here we are not creating anything but selecting the create template will generate a submit form which will be used to post the data on the server in the model class select registration view model add here again remove this heading to show success message from the view bag when user successfully does registration come here and write if view bag dot message is not equals to null then let's print this success message this is this view bag message from the registration method back here you can see it has created input fields for all the fields that is present in the view model also we have confirmed password field from view model which is not in the entity class that's the advantage of using view model let's change this button text to register and here let's change it to go to the login page if user has not already registered back to account controller class now let's create the last view for this index method for this method i don't have any view model as i was not planning to use this method but now as i'm using it i can go ahead and use the entity class directly template we will use is list model user account and again i will not use the db context field as i am already passing the user list data to my view from my action method click add so this is the generated html code here we should not display user's password so remove them also we are not doing edit delete or seeing the details of the user so delete these links also now let's run this application and here let's go to the registration page but we don't have any link 
to visit registration or login page. It's good if we show it somewhere here on the screen. So let's do that. For that, we will create a partial view. Inside this view folder, right click on this shared folder, add view, select reserve view, add. Let's give this name underscore login partial. Generally, partial views are named in this way with underscore. In the options, select create as partial view checkbox. Click add. In this, delete all these. First, we'll check if user identity name is not null. So context.user.identity.name is not equals to null. Else, user is not logged in. So we will display links for login and register. For that, I will use this unordered list with these classes from bootstrap and inside it we have two links one for register and one for login and they both are from account controller so here i have mentioned the asp controller attribute also and here are their respective action method if user is not null then we will display user's name and a logout button we will create a form and then we'll add these attributes. Here we are mentioning the controller and the action method where the form will be posted. Form method type is post and I have given ID. And this ID is really not required, but I have just used it. Inside this, again, we will have an unordered list. And in the first list item, we will show user's name and in second list, we will show logout button. The second button is a type of submit. So this will post this form to this controllers, this action method, which is actually our logout method. Okay, let's save this. Now this partial view is done, but we need to display it on the screen somewhere. So I will open underscore layout.cshtml file and here I will add this partial view like this way. Now let's run the application. So here you can see the register and login links are visible. If I click on register, here is the registration page. And if I click on login link, here is the login page. Here you can see the label is username or email just like we specified in the data annotation display name attribute in login view model. Now let's go to the registration page and register a user. First name John, last name Do, email john at rate yup.com. If I remove this dot com part and go to the next control, you can see it is showing the validation message that we set using the regular expression on registration view model. Let's write it back. Username John. Give it some password. If I give it less than five characters, you can see it is giving the validation message for minimum characters required. Repeat the same password again. If it doesn't match with the password you gave in the above text box, it's showing error message. So let's keep it same and click on register and here you can see the success message appearing John do registered successfully please log in now let's go to the login page here you can use username or email I will use email keep the password and click login you can see here it is it is showing this alert because I used 12345 as password. Click on OK. It's good thing to keep your password in an alphanumeric format. You can enforce this rule, but I'm not covering it in this video. So here is the secure page and it is showing the user email as we assigned in the claims type name. 
here in the partial view area you can see it is displaying the username and the logout button if i click on this log off button it is logging the user out and redirecting the user to index page which is displaying the users list by the way you can remove this create new link as it is not required on this page i forgot to remove this to verify if user is logged out or not let's visit the secure page using this url so i will write account slash secure page hit enter and you can see it is redirecting us to the login page you can see the url with return url so it means that user is successfully logged out so this is how you can create login registration and logout functionality in asp.net core mvc with cookie authentication now there are some points to note one is that we are not using the alphanumeric password rule and second is if we go to the account controller we are saving the password in the database in plain text format ideally that should be in hashed format if i show you the database record here you can see that data is saved in plain text format so people in your company or anyone who have access to your database can know the password of a user which is not a secure thing this needs to be saved in hashed format you can check on the internet to apply this hashing if i will create a video on this topic then i will let you know then i will put that link in the description if you like this video hit that like button subscribe for more contents like this if you have any questions then let me know in the comment section thanks